Hello everybody, today on Games as Food we're making stuffed chicken with mashed potatoes and pea puree. And while we're at it, we might as well discuss what makes this meal so similar to Persona 5 Strikers. When making a puree, you'll obviously start with the main vegetable. You can pretty much pick whatever you like, and I'll be going with peas since... I like them, and it's kind of a throwback. I used to eat them daily a couple of years back, but I've since fallen off. That feeling of getting back to something you know is exactly what you'll get from Strikers. It took less than a couple of minutes for me to get into it like I was continuing my playthrough of Persona 5. And while the character is welcoming you back, there's a lot to establish that the real kicker is that you get started so quickly in this game. But that's mainly from a gameplay aspect. Story-wise, the game has a lot more build-up than Persona 5. The start of Strikers has a way softer tone than the horrific events of P5. But as you play, the story gets added complexity and a more serious feel. And this is the exact thing that we're gonna be doing with the peas. While they are great just the way they are, we can build on them and add complexity by adding onions, garlic and using chicken stock instead of water. And after a bit of blending, we've gone from good old peas to something that looks quite high class if I may say so myself. I've never made a puree before, but if I ever need to impress anybody, I know exactly what to do. Usually when I make something new, I make something I'm comfortable with as well. It's to keep things simple and make the meal as a whole feel like less of a project and more as gaining a new skill. It's also a fallback since if I mess up, there is still something on the plate I know I like. So for this one, I decided to go with some good old mashed potatoes. While crispy potatoes are what most people probably rate higher, you have to respect the mash. It's very much a comfort food to me and it has that rustic feel to it which makes me think of home. Strikers has that same thing going on in its presentation. While it's not simple in the way mashed potatoes are, it stands out and is instantly recognizable. All the UI is in the same style as it was back in the day and the music is just as good as before. There's of course new stuff but it's integrated beautifully as each new UI transition has gotten so much care to make sure it fits with the high standard of P5. And the new music is as great as ever but with an added twist to fit the more action oriented game. That type of twist is obviously present in cooking as well. Depending on your process and what ingredients you use you might end up with something that while very different is still mashed potatoes. It's the similarities that create the Persona 5 feel rather than the possible differences. And this is ultimately a big part of what makes Strikers feel like a full on sequel rather than a spin off. We've gone on about the similarities between the two Personas, so it's only fair that we discuss the differences as well. Most likely you're aware of the fact that the gameplay is like night and day. P5 is a turn based RPG and Strikers is an action game or a hack and slash or whatever you want to call the genre. Now, this is the first time that I play a Dynasty Warriors type game. And I won't lie, a big part of that is because I had preconceived notions that the combat was mindless and spammy. But looks can be deceiving. You might think you're looking at a regular chicken breast, but there's always the chance that there is mozzarella and bacon hiding inside. So the gameplay's depth isn't noticeable at a glance, but once you cut into it, you'll see that not only is there something there, but it's a major part of the experience. There's multiple combo routes to go down. Some of them focus on just doing quick damage. Others, like the launcher combos, move your characters so you can be offensive and defensive at the same time. But the most fun ones to get a grasp of were the combo enders that led to using your personas. Veterans of the series will know how vital it is to have a clear understanding of your persona strengths and weaknesses. And in Strikers, knowing what persona abilities your combos lead into is just as important. You can either do extra damage because you're using the right typing, or you could be leading into buffs and play the long game. Then on top of all of this, there's the fact that the characters play differently leading to even more variety. You'll end up picking characters that are good for specific enemies, but you'll also get favorites purely based on playstyle. There's also the fact that at any given time, you can stop the action in order to throw abilities. Although what I described thus far makes it seem like a hardcore action game, the reality is that it doesn't forget about its RPG roots. You can't really ask for more, as I felt like I was still learning stuff as the game was coming to an end. But even so, I never felt overwhelmed. The game allowed me to take my time and discover a fantastic combination that I believe both fans of RPGs and action games can enjoy equally. 
With the high amount of action at play, it's nice that the game takes some time to wind down and give you a breather as well. The split between the action in the cognitive world and the chill stuff in the real world is a lot more skewed to the cognitive world than it was in P5, but there's enough stuff to do in the real world for it to be a substantial part of the game, and I quite like that there is no real pressure during these sequences. It's kind of like doing the breading on the chicken. There's no risk of anything burning, you can take your time and enjoy preparing for showtime. So we're finally here with a lovely plate before us that encapsulates what Persona 5 Strikers stands for. Let's check out the cross section of the chicken and... What? This isn't my mozzarella and bacon filling. This is... ricotta? And... spinach? Where's my plate of Strikers? Oh, there it is. It seems like I got confused with my Persona 5 plate since they are so similar at a glance. Of course, you've seen that under the surface, we're working with different stuffing. But there's even more differences than meets the eye. The mashed potatoes on the Persona 5 plate made use of thyme and garlic infused milk, which adds an unexpected surprise of flavor. And for the pea puree, we've used liquid smoke instead of chicken stock. While it sounded like a good idea in my head, it made the puree taste like hot dogs. It may be interesting, but certainly not something I would recommend others to do. This is all to show how both games fully embrace the Persona 5 feel and style. As such, while being part of the same series, the differences once uncovered make for very unique experiences. So if we were to think of the Persona 5 experience as stuffed chicken breast with mashed potatoes and pea puree, it doesn't stop it from experimenting within that space. There are things that I prefer about the Persona 5 plates, and there are things that I like more about the Strikers plates. But at the core, they are both experiences that I enjoy a lot because after all, they embody the same core values. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. And let me know in the comments what you thought of Persona 5 Strikers. Also, I ended up combining a bunch of different recipes for this video, so in case you're interested in recreating the meal, you'll find a link to a recipe video that I uploaded in the description. Thank you. Have a great day.